Hi, this is Francesco Rulli. I'm the CEO of Querlo. I'm also the Forbes Insights AI Solutions Business Partner. I'm here today with uh, uh, Brian Stulpner, uh, who is actually the Vice President of Strategy Planning um, and Innovation for Schneider National. So, uh, Brian, if you can share with us a little bit more insight about your work. Sure thing, Francesco. Thank you very much for having me. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, I'm Vice President of Strategy Planning and Architecture at Schneider. Um, that includes innovation, which really makes the job interesting. For those of you who don't know Schneider, we are a premier provider of transportation and logistics services, uh, roughly $5 billion in revenue. And we've been around for about 85 years. Um, and in that 85 years, are really seen as one of the leading innovators in the industry. You know, we like to say we're always delivering and we're always ahead, kind of looking forward um, in the space. And my role at Schneider, I have accountability, like I said, for you know, that strategy and innovation work and a lot of the, the things we do in the digital space. Um, so I lead our internal innovation team, which is really trying to find you know, value from new and emerging technologies um, that live at that intersection of business and technology. So you know, the really exciting part uh, of the world that we're, we're working our way into. Thank you, uh, Brian. So I was looking forward to this interview. My background is actually uh, in the early 1990s, uh, I, I did work in the freight forwarding business uh, with an Italian company established here in the United States, and many things have happened since then. Now we are in the middle of the COVID era, so if we are also able to look at the future, where do you forecast for what I call the post-COVID era to be the challenges, but also the opportunities in your industry? Sure. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's evolving you know, day by day. But I think one of the things that's consistent is it's highlighting our need to do more with less. Um, I think time has really shown itself as a, a massive constraint for us as we have people who are full-time associates, full-time parents, full-time teachers. Um, time has really become critical um, and it's almost overwhelming. And you couple that with steadily evolving needs in terms of you know, what are the experiences you know, that we're expecting to have? What are the interactions, whether it's deliver me everything I want, you know, make it paperless, make it contactless. Um, all of those things are kind of speeding up the transformation that many companies like us have, us have been on, um, but it's really making it go much and much faster because we need to be smarter and more effective with that limited time that we have. Um, <clears throat> from an opportunity standpoint, we really like to see kind of the artificial intelligence world as collaborative intelligence. Um, being that assistant for the person that, that helps you know, do the most with that limited time um, allows the human to maximize you know, the value as humans, like working on those higher value items, um, relationships, being proactive, helping solve problems, and letting machines handle the work that machines do really well. Um, so I think this COVID crisis, and you know, hopefully as we emerge from it, has made people a little bit more comfortable with that kind of assistant component of technology and AI in particular, um, you know, allowing them to do more and allowing them to get information that helps them make decisions um, in a much more effective, faster way. Um, and I think, you know, if there's one benefit from this, it's that AI has become less scary um, in this process. I think people are much more accepting of it now just because of all the constraints that we have on us. Um, and, you know, while we can't really see What's going to come next? I think those those factors are going to remain constant. You know, when we emerge from this crisis. Thank you. So, speaking about artificial intelligence, so that is the core of our business, and also what we do in collaboration with Forbes. Uh, are there some specific use case that uh, you're looking at implementing artificial intelligence? And uh, how far are you into the uh, artificial intelligence journey? Uh, you know, at this point. Yeah, so we've been working in kind of that AI machine learning space for several years now, um, whether it's providing recommended loads to third party drivers, you know, helping to identify where they are, what they typically do and get them a best match. Um, internally, making our associates more efficient and effective by taking some work off of their plates. Um, I think in general, we go after use cases for associates drivers and customers that are really gonna help them in their experience, you know, remove friction, um, provide better responsiveness. Um, so we've seen some early successes in the work that we've done, you know, taking work off of people's plates, you know, getting after the real need, for example, from a customer standpoint, 
a lot of our customers are looking for some, some basic things, responsiveness, visibility, um, control at their fingertips, the ability to access data and do different things. Um, and our, our work in the AI space and a lot of our, our technical work is geared at you know, getting those things you know, knocked off for them. Um, similarly on our driver side, so we have a ton of drivers that, that work for us, both company and third party. And driving is a tough job. And I mean, COVID has helped highlight the fact um, you know, how important truckers are to the economy. And what we want to do is make that experience as good as it can be, take as much friction away from them as we can. Um, and you know, tools such as artificial intelligence help us to do that. Um, you know, take that friction out, let them focus on driving. Um, and that's really where we see great benefits. Thank you, Brian. So if people want to learn about, uh, more about your work, what's the best way to learn more and maybe even reach out to you? Yeah, I think LinkedIn is always a, a great option. So you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, otherwise, you know, Schneider's website has a lot of information on us as a whole. Um, those are probably the two best bets. And I love talking about this. So feel free to reach out. Thank you. All right. Thank you.